Okay, well, we'll get started right away. My name is Dennis Normile. Uh, I'm the Japan correspondent for Science Magazine and former president here. I'll be the moderator this morning. Uh, our guest is Toshi Oshitana. Oshitani. <laughs> I've known this man for 20 years and I just can't get his name straight. Uh, we think he's a very important uh, source to have address us on this topic. He was with an advisor to the WHO, uh, the Western Pacific Regional Office, during the SARS outbreak in 2002 and 2003. He was one of the very first to pick up news that a strange disease was circulating in southern China, and it was uh, partly thanks to his efforts and the efforts of others that uh, the disease that came to be known as SARS was brought to light. Since leaving WHO in 2005, he has been at Tohoku University, uh, and he studies both epidemiology, or public health, and virology. And with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Dr. Oshitani. Okay. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's my great pleasure to be here uh, to share my own idea, the own thought, uh, about uh, what's going on in J Japan and also what's going on in other countries. So as you probably know, the, the, this novel coronavirus is quite similar to the SARS coronavirus genetically, but it, this doesn't mean that uh, this virus is similar in terms of epidemiology or the clinical characteristics. They actually epidemiology and the clinical characteristic of this virus is very, very different from SARS. And uh, especially the SARS, the most of cases had severe disease. And the mild, there are some mild cases, but the mild cases were rare. And for this one, the, this one has a new name. And uh, the, many of the infected individuals develop mild illness, or the even asymptomatic infections, the, the infection without any symptoms, the, uh, seems to be very common. But uh, there are some severe cases, and for severe cases, it is exactly the same as the SARS. And uh, the virus causes the viral pneumonia, severe viral pneumonia, and uh, in some cases, the multiple organ failure occur. And that's the, the basic characteristics of SARS. And uh, so the, this is the containment strategy for SARS. The, as Dennis mentioned, uh, uh, I was in WHO during SARS. And uh, this is a very basic 19th century strategy uh, to, cont to control this kind of disease. The, we first do active case finding, try to find all cases, all possible cases. And uh, all possible cases should be isolated in proper isolation facility. And the contact tracing should be done, the extensive contact tracing, the, to find all the close contact of cases. Then the contact should be under quarantine, the, the home quarantine or quarantine in the certain facilities. And if there is any case among contact, we should again isolate the, these cases. That's basic strategy. But for this one, it's very difficult to do this uh, because there is mild. There are many mild cases, and uh, it's very difficult to find the the case like that one, that pink one. And uh, if we miss this one, the, we cannot put the contact under quarantine. And uh, if there is any case. We cannot isolate such case. And the chain of transmission, the invisible chain of transmission can occur. The, and another characteristic of this virus the, is the, this one. The, for SARS, and it's actually for Ebola, it's the same. The, I was in uh, Liberia in 2014, during Ebola. So we used the, the exactly the same strategy. Uh, for containing Ebola virus in West Africa. And because containment was feasible for SARS and Ebola, because the patients are only infectious, 
the, during the late stage of illness, when they develop very severe illness. For such disease, the containment is possible. But the, this, one, the, this one is in influenza. influenza. For influenza, infectivity is probably the highest during early stage of illness. And the, even the people are infected people are infectious during the incubation period. So we don't know the exactly the, the when the patients are infectious for this virus, but it's probably similar to influenza. Then containment is the much more difficult or even not possible. That because uh, the containment strategy is to isolate all cases that when they develop the early symptom. But uh, for influenza, it's too late. That probably for this virus, it's too late. The, even if you isolate the cases at the onset of illness, it may be too late to stop the spread. So it's very tricky virus. And uh, we are, and uh, Japan and the many other countries are implementing the similar the surveillance that we try to detect symptomatic case with travel history to Wuhan or Hubei, the later in Hubei, or the symptomatic case with contact history uh, to those who had a travel history to the Wuhan or Hubei. So this is a, the surveillance scheme that, uh, that we had and the many other countries, most of countries, are still having. Then if we have asymptomatic or very mild cases, the very mild case, if the mild, very mild cases or asymptomatic cases transmit the virus to others, the, <coughs> it, it's getting very difficult to detect the, con, the cases among contact. But it's still possible. The, the, I don't know if you know this, but uh, there are the, the bus driver the, in Nara the, who was infected with this virus, the, he didn't know the, from whom he was infected. But he knew that the, he that drove the, 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 the bus the, with the, the tourist group from uh, Wuhan. That's why he was picked up by this surveillance. But the, if there are one more generation, the, if there is one more generation, so this person does not have any travel history. This person does not have any contact history with those from the Wuhan or Hubei. Then if the transmission chain started from this person, the, this transmission chain become invisible. We cannot detect the deeds transmission chain. So it's completely out of our radar. That is happening in Japan and uh, also many other countries. I'm sure the same thing is happening, has been happening uh, in many different places. And uh, so the Wuhan, the, the I, I'm not sure that when the, exactly when the outbreak started, but probably by early December or even November, the, they, their outbreak started. And then they initially detected cases among the, that market. And, uh, and uh, initially there were 41 or so cases. Uh, but uh, at that time, there were probably thousands of other cases, undetected cases among them. And uh, when they realized the situation was the out of control, that's probably what was happening in Wuhan. And it's very tricky virus. And uh, if I were in Wuhan, in charge of the control of this virus, I probably made the same mistake. And it's completely different from SARS. And uh, so this is a, 
epidemic curve by date of reporting the, in Japan. The, since Thursday last week, we've been seeing the new cases in different places. And actually, the, since about three weeks ago, I've been telling to media that uh, the, we will, one day we would see sudden increase of number of cases. And that is happening in Japan now, the, since the Thursday last week. But this doesn't mean that uh, we are seeing in the suddenly increasing number of cases. We are just uh, seeing suddenly increasing detected cases. Right. And actually, by date of onset, it's like this. So it's not the sudden increase. The 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 human to human transmission the has been occurring for some time in Japan. The, we just the started detecting these the chain of transmission. So before February 13, we were in a situation like this. In the Tokyo Dome, the, you put off all the lights, and the, the, there are many ping pong balls in the ground, and the, we were looking for the, the cases by using pen light. That was the situation before Thursday last week. And uh, we are now a bit better. And uh, we've been seeing some cases. And if we find one case, the, we can do the contact tracing. And uh, we can find some cases around the case. The, that's why we are seeing the, the increasing number of cases. But uh, the, why we managed to visualize invisible the chain of transmission? The, because we have a good healthcare system. And quality of physician is quite high in Japan. So they realize the unusual the viral pneumonia cases. That's why the, we managed to detect some cases. And uh, so this is uh, the epidemic curve outside of mainland China and outside of China. And uh, so now many local cases. Uh, not only in Japan, but also in many other countries. And uh, as far as I know, there are only three places the, where the, we can visualize the, this chain of transmission. The Hong Kong, Singapore. I was in Singapore last week and uh, to discuss uh, this issue with the uh, Minister of Health people. And uh, also, the Japan is now catching up with uh, Singapore and uh, the Hong Kong. They, they, had, they have very good system uh, because they have the SARS experience. And uh, they, from the beginning, they are seeing some chain of transmission. But uh, we lost all the chain of transmission for some time, but uh, we are now ca catching up. And, uh, the how big is the problem? We still not we are still not sure. The, but the, the, I'm sure there are many more chain of transmissions. The, we should detect the chain of transmission as many as possible in coming days to understand the the problem, the extent of the problem, and how large each chain of transmission. It's still not known. And uh, so the, 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 we are not sure the, how many cases under, the, the, uh, under these cases. And if ch chain of transmission started two week, to three weeks ago, the probably in this chain of transmission, there are many, not many cases, 10 or 20 cases. But the, if the chain of transmission started four or five weeks ago, the, we might have more cases around the, these chain of transmission. So we need to find out the, how big the problem is. And by doing the epidemiological investigation, but, uh, the, these are the, my, the risk assessment. The, so the initial risk assessment, 
the, the, I had three different scenario. The best case scenario, most likely scenario, the worst case scenario. And then the best case scenario was no outbreak in Japan. But uh, by understanding what's going on in Wuhan, the, this chance was getting smaller and smaller and uh, approaching to zero. And uh, on the February 13, uh, we realized this chance is zero. And, uh, but uh, the most likely scenario is the some outbreak in Japan. But the, the worst case scenario is the widespread Wuhan-like outbreak in Japan. But I don't think the, uh, this is going to happen in Japan. The, we are detecting the chain of transmission in early stage of uh, the outbreak. It's not like a Wuhan, the, where the, when they realize there are many, many the chain of transmissions and the uh, station was un, the out of control. But the, the, we are not in that situation. So the current risk assessment, the best case scenario is a small scale outbreak in several places. But uh, the, I'm not sure the, this is the case. And the most likely scenario is a small scale outbreak in different places with the larger outbreak in some places. That's still possible. And the uh, worst case scenario is a larger outbreak in many locations with in some outbreaks the outbreak go beyond the local capacity. The hospital care capacity, local public health, care, public health capacity, and that's the worst case scenario for Japan. And we have to uh, prevent uh, this thing to happen. And, uh, and my major concern is the, there was the huge outbreak in Wuhan. And as I said, the chain of transmissions are I'm pretty sure that the chain of transmission are going on in different places, different, different countries. And uh, in coming weeks, we may see very large outbreak somewhere in Asia or Africa. That is my major concern now. I was in the Manila this week to discuss this with the WHO and uh, the, the, the Philippine government, the people. That, uh, so this is the, my major concern right now. And uh, if this do happen, the, we will continue to have imported cases from different places, not from Wuhan, but from other places. So that's the, we have to, to prevent this to happen. And the international community should work together to prevent this to happen. So thank you very much, and I'm happy to answer any questions. OK. Is this on? OK, we'll move right into Q&A, and uh, right here is Bella. Name and affiliation. Um, Isabel Reynolds from Bloomberg, thank you very much for your uh, talk. Um, I wondered uh, if you could give an assessment of how the Japanese government has dealt with this so far. I know some other countries introduced more extensive travel bans from the whole of China and so on. Japan's um, way of dealing it seems to be rather soft in comparison with others. So this virus spread very, very fast. And uh, not only China not only Japan, but also many other countries cannot catch up with the speed of this virus. The all measures the, we have done so far were too late. And uh, even if we the, the implement travel one to China, China, all over China, it was the, too late. And uh, so the the, this virus has the, gained this speed that because of uh, the rapidly increasing human movement. The, now within China, every day, the millions of people are traveling. <coughs> and uh, we have uh, international flight from Wuhan. The, 
and many other cities in China. So that's why the, this virus spread so fast. And uh, we've been too late to do anything so far. Uh, I had Martin and then uh, Richard and Rocky. A following up question to that. Uh, now, today, uh, the, uh, the first ca um, quarantine people from the ship, from the Princess Diamond, are being allowed off board. Uh, there was some criticism, basically, yeah. for the quarantine on the ship. Uh, do you share this criticism, or what do you think about uh, quarantine people on a ship like that? The, the basically, the, the quarantine in ship is uh, the 19th century type of the strategy. And, uh, but uh, it was probably very difficult to make any decision. And uh, the cruise ship, cruise ship issue is getting the bigger and the bigger, the political issue. And uh, the, I want the, my, the, the mission is to focus on technical issue. And uh, I'm trying to understand the, the situation. And I'm trying to understand what can be done in Japan and other countries. And uh, the cruise ship issue is not my, the, the major part of uh, the, this mission. So the cruise ship is n not, is, yeah, I'm sure it's not uh, the major source of outbreak in Japan or some other countries. So the, it's beyond my capacity to consider the both the what is going on in Japan and what is going on and what to do with the cruise ship. So the, I'm trying not to think that too much about cruise ship. Richard. <laughs> Thank you, Richard Lloyd Parry of The Times. I take your point that the, the cruise ship is only a small part of this very big picture, but perhaps it also raises more general questions about the competence of the health authorities in Japan. I don't know if you've seen this video, which is going around at the moment by uh, Dr. Kentaro Iwata mm -hmm. of Kobe University, where he describes his experiences on the ship, I think yesterday or the day before. And, and the situation he describes is one where uh, the, the ship was being run by, by bureaucrats who, who simply don't know what they're doing and don't have a grasp of the most basic principles of infection control, uh, but who are also unwilling to listen to a professional like him who is giving them the basic advice and forced him to leave the ship. Now that, doesn't it, raises a big question about whether the people in charge of dealing with this epidemic are capable of, of doing that. So I'd like to hear your, your answer to that. And the second question is about um, the quality of, of international data and the quality of surveillance of this epidemic in, in various countries. And I wonder if you could give your views on that. I mean, clearly that's important in, in, in tracking this for all countries. But for example, I believe that, that Indonesia, a, a vast country, uh, has so far reported no cases. India, another huge country, has reported very few. It seems unlikely, doesn't it, that that information is sound? Okay, so getting back to this cruise ship issue. And um, the, the, this is very unexpected event. It's very difficult event. And uh, in this kind of situation, the, this type of unexpected event can occur. And uh, during SARS, we had Amoy Garden, which was completely unexpected. And uh, I, I can understand that it was very difficult to uh, handle this issue. The probably the people or the government uh, did not expect such many cases were infected in the cruise ship. And, uh, but uh, now the government is the, formed the, the expert committee 
and I'm also the member of the committee. And the first meeting was held in on Sunday, and uh, so the now the the situation is getting much better, and uh, we have another meeting today the, about uh, the mass gathering and what to do with mass, ga mass, mass gathering. So the situation is getting, I, I, I believe that the situation is getting better. Uh, and what about the, the, uh, ah, the data? Data, okay. So the, they are not hiding the data. The simply, they cannot detect any cases. That's my understanding. And uh, they, in the Philippines, they had uh, three cases. The, one of them was uh, the fastest outside of mainland China. And uh, then the, they could not get, detect any cases. Because they are still using the, the surveillance, the scheme that we used to have. That surveillance scheme cannot detect any cases anymore. So the simply, they are trying to find the cases among those with the travel history to Hubei. But the, no one is coming from Hubei. No one is going to any places from Hubei. <coughs> then we cannot detect any cases. So we have to change the surveillance scheme. That's what uh, the WHO is uh, considering. And uh, okay, just uh, one point of clarification. You referred to the expert committee. Is that expert committee focused only on the cruise ship issue, or no, the no. outbreak in yeah. general? Yeah. Outbreak in okay. general. Okay, I, I think we had Rocky, then the uh, woman in the back. Good morning, Rocky Swift from Reuters. Some experts have said that in, in the context of this outbreak, that Japan needs something like the equivalent of the CDC to uh, combat these kinds of threats. Um, could you speak on that? And in the context of no one could have expected this, but that's the job of the government and these kind of relevant bodies is to expect and have the capacity to deal with the unexpected. Thank you. I think we need uh, something like a CDC in Japan, but uh, we do not have CDC now in Japan. So we have to deal with this outbreak uh, without CDC. And uh, probably the, after this outbreak, uh, the, we have to start discussing this the possibility. OK, the woman in the back there, and then uh, here and here. And OK, I see you. Uh, River Davis from the Wall Street Journal. Uh, I also want to ask about the cruise ship, less politically, but more about what to do going forward. Um, today, people are coming off the ship who have been tested negative. Uh, but I want to ask from the viewpoint of um, isolating contacts, uh, some of the people we've talked to on the cruise have said that they were OK to use public transport to go home. Isn't there the chance that after testing negative, they may have been exposed yet again? Um, I would like to ask your response to that. The, if uh, the the people tested negative, uh, the, they are less likely to infect others, the, especially they don't have any symptoms. The, we are not sure if there is uh, any asymptomatic transmission. That means uh, the the people without the individual without any symptom, the the pass the virus to others. But uh, this is the, the possible, but uh, the, that's at least not the major driving force of the outbreak. And uh, so we have to decide certain the, the criteria. The, if we the, try to have a zero risk, the people have to be <coughs> under quarantine for 40 days or 50 days. So then the, the, we already have the community, the person-to-person uh, the -person transmission in the community. And uh, there is no the point to the 
have zero risk. Try to have a zero risk. That's uh, the, the my idea. Right here. <coughs> my name is Patrick Walter. I'm with Frankfurt Allgemeine Zeitung. I have two questions. You said concerning the cruise ship, the method used was a 19th century method. That was a nice quote, but I'm just wondering what would you have proposed, what could be done in the 21st century to do against it? And my second could you do something differently? Anyhow, and my second question is, there were reports, I, I'm, I'm wondering how long it took to test all these people on the cruise ship mm -hmm. against the virus, and there were reports that there was not enough capacity in Japan to, to do tests and stuff like that. So I wonder if, if, the regular, if the scenario you expect for Japan is going to happen, how good is Japan prepared to deal with a situation like that? Okay. So the, if the everybody are coming to Japan by boat, by taking the two weeks, the, that kind of strategy will be effective. But uh, the most of people are coming by airplane now. And so, we, but uh, again, it was probably very difficult for me to make any decision at the beginning. That is understandable. But uh, as a basic strategy, we have to change the mindset. The, we have to use the uh, 21st century the strategy. The lockdown of a city is also the 19th century type of the strategy. And uh, we have to, the, we are now trying to the, develop more, the, the smart way to the control this outbreak in Japan uh, by not interfering in any the economic or social activities. But uh, the effect, there should be some effective way to control this outbreak. And uh, we are now discussing how best we can control this outbreak. And in terms of uh, the laboratory capacity, that we have a very good, the, the probably the public health laboratory network in Japan is uh, one of the best in the world. But the still the capacity is limited. The, we did not expect or we should have expected but the, the the local public laboratory capacity is quite still limited and that's a bottleneck the, to find the all possible the chain of transmissions now and in Singapore the after SARS the they they establish the good system to uh, increase the capacity, testing capacity. In all, I understand most of the hospitals in Singapore are government hospitals, and all hospitals have uh, the PCR capacity. And uh, they can test uh, 2,000, more than 2,000 samples per day. But uh, we don't have such capacity in Japan. And uh, the now the testing capacity is increasing and uh, it has already been increased. And uh, in coming weeks, uh, the, I'm sure the testing ca capacity will increase. But uh, the right now, that's the bottleneck. How the, big is the capacity right now in Japan? The, they, they, they expanded this, the capacity. I, I can't remember the exact number, but, but the 3,000 something per day, the, the samples can be tested, and uh, more sample the, can be tested in the coming days. The man in the middle here. Hi, Steve Wade from Associated Press. Let me change the topic off the cruise ship and talk about the Olympics a little bit. Okay. You have. The question, another, another political issue. <laughs> the question is, how do the Olympics go forward safely? We're five months away. We have 11,000 athletes coming in, hundreds of thousands of tourists, 206 countries represented, 5,000 Paralympic athletes. How do we go forward and have a safe Olympics? Is it possible? The, I don't know. I'm not sure. The, the, the situation in Japan at the end of the July but uh, the probably the, we do not have the, the large outbreaks in Japan in Ju July. 
the the we are now trying to the control this virus, and uh, we unfortunately uh, we managed to detect some chain of transmission in early stage. The, we have a more chance to control this virus the the earlier. But uh, as I mentioned, my major concern is the the having the Wuhan type of place somewhere in the world. And uh, so if the, we have that kind of place somewhere in the world at end of July, the, we will keep having the imported cases in many different places, including Japan. So then it may be getting difficult to have Olympic. So we, what we have to do now is the try to, to the prevent such thing to happen. So Japanese government also should try best uh, to support these countries, uh, not having the, that kind of situation. That's the the what we should do. May I ask a follow-up? Is this a virus that will abet with the heat? Is it, will it be affected by the hot weather, or do we know? I, we don't know, but uh, at least the now the some the the chain of transmission has been established in Singapore. Singapore is a tropical city, and uh, it at the end of July. The, there are some places the, where they have winter, southern hemisphere. So the, we have to consider all these things. The, there are many uncertainties, but uh, we have to consider all these things. I asked a virologist if the cases of this virus would taper off as summer came around, and he, he's, he told me to get back to him in August. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the woman here, do you still have a question? Yes, and then uh, at the back there. Okay. I'm Magda Sumi from the Japan Times. I'd like to ask you, uh, it won't be a political question. Uh, on, um, on Monday, the government uh, issued uh, guidance uh, for um, well, general, for, cit uh, for citizens and for medical institutions uh, screening uh, patients. And now with the hay fever season, and uh, I'm struggling with right now, mm -hmm. and uh, other uh, and influenza, uh, how, what kind of uh, measures should uh, the government introduce to uh, prevent, to help those uh, people who really need, with mild symptoms, uh, who really need to be screened, who, who need to be, uh, who, ac who need to access those uh, uh, tests uh, so they can be really uh, seen by uh, doctors and uh, what other people should do to uh, to I'm sorry the mm, the government is uh, suggesting to uh, well stay uh, for two days at home if you're uh, having um, mild fever uh, is it really possible to prevent uh, well this confusion and help people diag well, this with diagnostics it's very difficult to communicate this with the general public but uh, the people need to understand that uh, the, for those with mild symptoms, the, we cannot, unfortunately, we cannot do anything. The, if, even if they visit his care facilities. For influenza, we have a rapid test. In Japan, it's very common the, for people to go to the, some clinics to be tested. And uh, if they're tested positive, they get antivirals. The, not in many other countries, but the, in Japan, it's very, very common practice. But the, they have to change this the, the behavior the, because, the, unfortunately, we cannot do anything for mild cases. We cannot test. The, as I mentioned, our testing capacity is quite limited. We probably can test only the severe cases. Uh, right now, we can test 
the, even the mild or even asymptomatic cases. But if we have uh, more cases, we cannot test mild cases. And uh, we cannot give any the specific drugs to the patient. So, just, yeah. Just a follow-up question. Uh, so, uh, can we expect any uh, some more secondary infections because of those invisible uh, chains of transmission you were talking about? Like, in, in, if we can't really uh, find those, detect those uh, people with mild uh, they, infections in with uh, in people with mild, mild cases. Mild or asymptomatic? I, I, we don't know. The who are infectious right now, and it's possible that uh, the mild or even asymptomatic ca uh, cases that can pass the virus to others. But uh, we need more data, and uh, we need to understand the more about the the the, the mode of transmission. And the, and the also the if you. The mild cases go to the, the clinic. We cannot do anything. But uh, the, we have to the, take care of the, those patients who are getting severe. So uh, for SARS, and it's probably the same for this virus, the, the patient are not initially not very severe. And uh, some patient are, you know, most of the patients are recovering without any the treatment, but some patients uh, are getting very severe all of a sudden around the seven or eight days after the onset. So uh, we have to detect such cases as early as possible, and we have to uh, provide proper care to those the patient who are getting severe as early as possible. That's why the, the government issued the, the, the guidance for the people to seek the care. And uh, that's the important. The, we may need to change the, that guidance, but uh, the, the guidance was developed uh, the based on our current knowledge. Andy? Yeah. Okay, this is um, Andy Sharp from the Nikkei Asian Review. A quick question to follow up on the testing procedures. Could you just explain to a layman like me how the test is done, how people are tested? And given the short period of time since the initial outbreak in Wuhan, how did you develop, how was this testing developed so quickly? And how reliable is this testing? I mean, does it differ from country to country? I heard from somebody that basically the tests in Indonesia don't work, so there's no cases there. I just don't think I heard anyway. But how is the reliability of the testing and the first two parts? Thank you. The, in most of laboratories, we are using uh, the system called real-time PCR. The PCR is a polymerase chain reaction uh, that amplify the genetic material of the virus. And uh, that's common. The, the the procedure right now, and uh, I'm sure that most of laboratories are using the same the the, the method. But the, the problem is the there are many different so-called primers and the probes uh, to be used the, to amplify the genetic materials. If there are any mismatch, the the this amplification the is ineffective. And then you, you may have some the false negative result. So, the, but uh, there are several protocols that are published. Uh, the, and the, and the, these, the, the protocols, uh, that should be OK. But still, the, we need to have uh, the quality assurance. Uh, in Japan, we are trying to expand testing capacity. But um, the, uh, the we cannot the, the send the sample to unreliable laboratory. So we always have to make sure that the testing is done properly. 
uh, perhaps if I can uh, just follow up on this. Um, I, I think this, uh, I know the answer to this question, but when they do this testing, they take swabs yes. from within the mouth. Mm -hmm. They're not taking blood samples. No, no. Right. No. And the sputum is also right. the possible sample. So they take the, sam the, the, the swab sample on like a cotton yeah, yeah. And, and send it to a laboratory. And I, I believe that you referred to the primers. One of the issues with the capacity was that it took some amount of time to develop and distribute mm -hmm. the correct primers. Is that yeah. right? And also, we need positive controls. And uh, so, without positive control, the testing result they cannot be reliable. So, the, this issue that need to be sorted out, and uh, not every laboratory can do the, this kind of test. In my laboratory, we can, we can do real-time PCR, but we still do not have a positive control. And one reason there are all these different reagents or primers mm -hmm. is because the data on the virus has been published. Mm -hmm. And so many different laboratories used that data to develop primers uh, independently of other laboratories, right? There are many, many different protocols now. And uh, so we have to uh, s the choose the best one uh, to detect this virus properly. Right, okay, uh, who had their, oh yes, the man here in the middle, yes, you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Walter Sim from the Straits Times of Singapore. Um, I was just wondering if you could give your assessment on mass gatherings. You said earlier that there's going to be a meeting later, but we see so many events being cancelled and or, or scaled down. Do you think this is necessary? That's my first question. And secondly, earlier on you said that a lot of the measures by the Japanese government, quoting your words, were too late. Do you think the government is doing enough now? Why or why, or why not? Thank you. Okay, mass gathering. The, we are going to discuss this uh, this evening. But uh, they, I don't think all mass gatherings the, are risky, and uh, the probably the we the need to know more, but we need to we need to get more data, but uh, the 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 possible or the possible risky the situation is the face-to-face -face contact the prolonged face-to-face -face contact. So I don't think the Tokyo Marathon uh, should be canceled because in the marathon, uh, there is no, not many the opportunity to have uh, the close, the prolonged face-to-face -face contact. But uh, the those event with uh, such contact the may pose some the risk of the transmission, and uh, so we have to the the develop some criteria. The uh, what kind of uh, mass gathering should be cancelled, and what kind of mass gathering that should not does not need to be cancelled. Uh, that's the what the, I want to discuss this evening. And uh, in terms of uh, the, the government the response, as I said, everybody was too late. And the Japan was too late. The China was too late. Uh, the WHO was too late. And, uh, but uh, now the Japan is catching up with uh, the at least Hong Kong and Singapore. And uh, we are detecting uh, the chain of transmission in the early stage, which is a very good sign. And uh, so the, we have to the, try our best to detect all possible chain of transmission. And uh, if we can detect uh, the chain of transmission early enough, then the, we have a more chance to control this virus. Kashiwagi-san. Kashiwagi of the Washington Post. Uh, I have a question regarding the test. Um, now the government is finally expanding the capacity like you explained. But in China, 
already thousands of tests has been conducted. In your view, um, the government could have uh, expanded the capacity much, much earlier, especially with cooperation with private sector or relying more on private sector. And also in that regard, how many more can Japan pump up the capacity from here? Thank you, Karen. So unfortunately, the, we do not have enough capacity right now. And um, the probably the one fortunate and the unfortunate thing for Japan is that we did not have SARS, that we did not have a mass, we did not have Ebola. And uh, so the, the, the based on the experience of SARS, the Hong Kong, Singapore, and the mainland China the developed the, the quite big testing capacity. But uh, the usual time, our capacity at the, in the local laboratories are quite enough. But uh, in this, time, this kind of setting, the, we should have the surge capacity, the, which was lacking in Japan. So now the government is trying to expand uh, the testing capacity, including a private laboratory. But uh, unfortunately, at the beginning, we did not have such capacity. How many more the capacities and um, testing capacity? And uh, With, uh, it, now that we have ah, yeah. So I understand uh, the the private laboratory is uh, the will start testing soon. The, I'm not sure how many the test how many samples per day can be done in these the private laboratories, but uh, the, that's the I understand what the government is working on. Uh, another point, just to clarify, the testing capacity is based on bits of laboratory equipment, mm -hmm. bits of laboratory equipment plus? Personnel. Plus personnel plus reagents or primers? The reagent is uh, the not, not the, you, 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 you can order the, from the company. Right. The, the in Japan, you can probably they can get the, within a few days. Uh, if you have a positive control on others, and, but uh, the personnel and the equipment, right. especially the personnel. Right. Is, uh, there was a question. Uh, yes, you. Dominic, Quebec government. So we have two questions about the risk of mutation of the virus. <laughs> and the other one, I've, I've read in Chinese or Uncom Media that the mortality rate is higher among smoking people or smoking habit. What do you think about it? Pardon? People who smoke, uh, smoke uh, yeah. smoking habit, and yeah. the, 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 the the mutation. The the I'm not sure the if there is any the further mutation, but uh, the I'm quite sure that there was a mutation. The that's why this virus the has the ability to the infect the human effectively. And uh, but the, the right now, the, this virus they can transmit from human to human quite effectively. And uh, from the virus point of view, there is no reason to mutate. And uh, so I don't think, but uh, the, the, there is possibility. And uh, the pathogenicity may change by some mutation. Uh, it's it's a possibility, but uh, the the right now this virus can transmit the effectively from human to human, and uh, there's not much reason for the virus to be the mutated, and for the smoking, the the that's the the possible risk factor. The, we need to have uh, more data, but uh, the people with uh, the 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 low uh, respiratory capacity the can have the the can be a, at higher risk of developing the, the severe symptoms. 
that's possible. Okay, the woman right here and then uh, in the back. Um, my name is Ariel Buzetto from the English side of Sanke Shimbun. I'm sorry, uh, start, it, start over. Oh, yes, hi. <laughs> um, my name is Ariel Buzetto from the English side of Sanke Shimbun Japan Forward. Uh, I have two questions about uh, your uh, main worry, which is that there will be another uh, epi sort of center that will cause like a further spread. Um, I was wondering if you had uh, any more specific uh, ideas of where it could happen. Would it be a big city? Would it be somewhere else, maybe like in Asia that hasn't reported cases yet? And if so, do you have any specific guidelines that you think the governments should uh, adhere to? You, as you mentioned it a little bit before that, for example, uh, people should be focusing more on the symptomatic aspect as opposed to whether they went to Wuhan or not. But if I was wondering if you had any more detail on that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I don't know. That we are not sure uh, that where there are the ongoing human, invisible ongoing, invisible ongoing human to human transmission. But uh, the, those people who have uh, the, the more incoming the, the travelers from China are at higher risk. And uh, so now the, there are many Chinese travelers to the many different parts of the world. And uh, most of the country are at risk, but uh, especially the the Asia, the is probably the first place we have to worry. And uh, the now the I'm I, I'm I'm the I'm not the one who developed the strategy, but the WHO is considering to develop the strategy to detect the 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 these the transmission <coughs> chain in the different places. The, we are still not sure the, the, what is the best way to detect the, these cases in uh, the resource limited setting. And, uh, but uh, the, the large outbreak is likely to happen in the big cities. And uh, so we first need to, to focus on the big city, but uh, even in uh, the local cities, uh, this can happen. Okay, back here. <laughs> I'm Klaus Scherer with ARD German TV. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, I understood that your major concern if it comes to the Olympics was if there were more hotspots like, yeah. like Wuhan that could affect the Olympics. So the other way around. There is Wuhan now. Mm -hmm. If the Olympics were to start now, would you recommend to not have them? <laughs> it's a tricky question. But uh, the, the Wuhan is locked down the now. And uh, there are no the incoming people from Wuhan. But, uh, but uh, in an, when, if we have a next epicenter. They, I don't know if we can do the same thing. Even a smaller scale, smaller than Wuhan, the, if we have a relatively big focus the, without lockdown, the, there might be the many exported cases to the different places, including Japan, including Tokyo. So that need to be prevented. We have to prevent this to happen. That's my idea. But that was not actually my question. Mm -hmm. That was still the future point. But right now, what would your recommendation be? It, it depends on the situation, and it depends uh, the how big the, the focus is, and uh, also the, by that time, we may have better strategy to control this virus, and uh, we are getting some hope. So the, the by end of July, the, we may be the different in terms of the, 
the, the strategy. We may have more effective strategy to control. And uh, even if we have an imported case to Tokyo, the, we can possibly detect the cases early enough. And it doesn't cause major outbreak. If the, we are the, not 100%, but if you are quite sure that the imported cases do not cause major outbreak, then, the, but the, the still we need to find the best way to have a, the safe Olympic. And, um, one more try, then I give up. <laughs> I, yes, okay. I think the question is. Right now or not? Huh? Would you hold the Olympics right now or not? Uh -huh. the, the right now, we don't have effective strategy. And uh, it may be difficult to have Olympic. But the by end of July, the, we may be in a different situation. I don't think you're going to pin them down on that. I have a follow-up question, though. Now, the, the strategy is that travelers are screened when they arrive at a destination airport. Mm -hmm. Would it be feasible to screen passengers before they leave their home countries? Actually, the WHO already recommend exit screening. So the, the, that's the possible and the way to prevent. And uh, also, the, in uh, the, the, if the, unfortunately, if we have a focus, the not, if the, the, that the new focus is not like Wuhan, uh, maybe there's some localized outbreak in a certain part of the city, then it may be the different story. So, the, I don't know the, what's the, it depends on the station. Have any countries or cities adopted the exit screening strategy? The, I don't know. But the, the right now, the, the mainland China is a major source of uh, the exported cases. But, uh, Okay, Oshitani-san has agreed to stay for a few more minutes, uh, so we'll take questions first from people who have not had a question yet. Uh, yes, right here, and then the woman over there. And then we'll go around. Yes, I see you. Thank you so much for today. Um, Manabu Takahashi from Yomiri Shimbun. I have a few questions. And firstly, uh, it's about your major concern. Uh, the outbreak in Asia or Africa and other regions in the world. Uh, on 14th, February 14th, maybe um, the first case was, uh, the first case of infection was uh, confirmed in Africa, um, Egypt. And um, comparing to uh, developed countries, um, African countries are much more vulnerable in terms of the um, healthcare system and um, public health system. So what do you think is the impact or the influence of the uh, African uh, countries' infection cases? And the second is, uh, is about the peak of this um, infection. Um, when uh, will be the peak of this coronavirus infection? And when do you predict? Thank you. We've been talking about uh, the limited capacity in Japan. And uh, of course, there are many other countries that with the much less capacity. So in these countries, uh, it is very, very difficult to detect cases. And uh, the also, the we are fortunate that uh, we have uh, the good healthcare system with the, the good physicians, but uh, in many other countries, they do not have a, this kind of system. And uh, in this setting, it's very, very difficult to detect cases. That's why I'm worrying about the, the Africa and Asia. And uh, the, in terms of uh, the peak, we don't know. But uh, the Wuhan type of outbreak cannot last long. And uh, so it is or it will be peaked, 
and uh, I'm not sure the, it is peaked or not, but uh, the the it will be peaked in uh, the the n not probably in weeks, but uh, the we have to the, we don't have uh, the the proper data uh, to the judge this, and uh, but uh, the certainly the the outbreak in Wuhan will be peaked. And, uh, but uh, if we have another Wuhan type of city, it's a different story. And globally, the, the, it's the, our next, we may have uh, the another, the big peak, if we have uh, the Wuhan type cities, the, especially the Wuhan like outbreaks in uh, different places, the, uh, we may see many more cases, and uh, that's why we need to prevent this. Just a point of clarification, why can't a big outbreak, such as in Wuhan, mm -hmm. uh, continue for very long? Mm -hmm. Why, you said, the Wuhan type of outbreak cannot last very long, yeah. why not? Because uh, they already probably the the at least a few percent of population have been infected, and uh, they are now implementing very very aggressive measures, and uh, which can the certainly slow down the spread. The containment is the not feasible for this one, but uh, still these aggressive measure can slow down the spread. Then the outbreak the will be peaked. Right. Once okay. You, once you've had the virus, do you get immunity to it, or could you catch it twice? I don't know. <laughs> the, we don't have any the data. The, for SARS, it doesn't last long. It do, didn't last long, so we the people do not have any chance to be exposed again. But for this virus, the people will certainly have a chance to be exposed again, then we have a data. And the repeated infection is possible, but the repeated infection is probably the less severe. Severe infection might be the very rare in those cases. Right, the woman over here. Thank you very much. I'm Shihori Komatsu, freelance. I'm interested in your uh, point, uh, pointing out face-to-face -face contact is the dangerous point. And um, I just wanted to figure out uh, more details in what kind of um, information you said where I went face-to-face because um, it's wearing masks enough um, because in corporations they're starting to uh, they're starting remote works, preventing people going to work and starting working from home. So are we getting too uh, cautious about face-to-face um, -face contact wearing masks, or what is your uh, idea about are we getting too cautious about getting remote work, or is it, is it an appropriate measure to take? The, we don't have the, any concrete evidence or the data the, regarding the mode of transmission. The, we don't know the exact mode of transmission of this virus, and uh, the many people believe that uh, droplet is a major mode of transmission for this one, but I'm not sure if the droplet is the major mode of transmission. Uh, the, we need more data, but uh, the, we have some infections the, among the, 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 the people who worked in uh, the, the, the cruise ship quarantine officer was infected. The ambulance driver was the infected. And uh, some other officer, uh, another officer was infected. And uh, we are now seeing uh, healthcare worker infections. And uh, we have to find out why these people are infected. The, these people are probably, uh, I'm sure that they, they had the masks but there's still some infections are occurring, and uh, we need to find out the why. But the, 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 from the common sense, the, if we have uh, the face-to-face -face contact, 
the 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 chance of infection, the risk of infection that does exist. So probably the the prolonged the face-to-face -face infection, a uh, face-to-face -face contact, the is probably the the main mode of transmission. But the, the again, we do not have any evidence of any concrete data uh, for this one. We need more data, and but uh, the the in many the setting where the infection occur, the business meeting in Singapore. The this yakatabune, the floating, the the boat restaurant. So these are the the setting where we have uh, the very close, the face to face, prolonged face to face contact. So this kind of contact, uh, they, I think they, this kind of contact should be avoided. Okay. Any, any other people who are asking the question for the first time? And then we go back to second rounders. Isabella. Um, hi, yes, my, my question is kind of from the opposite sorry, point of view. Sorry. Again, please? Isabel Reynolds from Bloomberg. Um, so the qu my question is about how people in Japan should behave amid this virus. So last night, the prime minister said, um, I'd like people who have a cold, to stay off school and stay off work. Now, this is slightly political, but as you know, in Japan, if you take time off school, that could affect your school record. You may not get into university. That's your whole life affected. Same goes with work. So is, is the prime minister effectively saying, let's carry on as normal? And if so, is, is that what we should do? OK, thank you very much for this question. The, um, everybody is worried about the infection of themselves. But uh, the more the we we don't know how we can the protect the from infection, but uh, the people the who has infection has quite important law. The if the you think you might be infected, you should try best not to infect others. The that's. Key, I think they, I believe this is a key message for them. The, the people, the, even if you are infected, the most of you do not develop the severe symptoms. The, it's probably the, a bit longer the influenza for most of people. But the, if you infect somebody else, then chain of transmission exists. The, along the chain of transmission, there might be hundreds of cases. Then the, we certainly see the severe cases. And uh, we certainly see some deaths. So we have to prevent this. So if you are sick, even the mild symptoms, you should stay home. And uh, the, the cough etiquette for the, those who, have, who might be infected is important. The washing hands is important for them. But the uh, washing hand f to prevent to, to get prevent uh, infection, I'm not sure if it's the, the very effective. So the, so we have to change our mindset. And uh, now everybody is worrying about their infection. But uh, the most important thing is when they might be infected, they should not uh, infect others. And they should try best not to infect others. Martin? My question is going into the I'm same sorry, direction. Yeah. Martin Kölling, uh, Handelsblatt. My question is going into the same direction. So just now we have this very strict uh, quarantine rules that basically infected people should be in quarantine for 14 days. Uh, if we have a spread of a lot of mild cases that might not even be detected, I mean, how do we deal yeah. with this? Or if, if you are uh, basically you are detected as uh, infected but you have only mild symptoms, should you also, should everybody then self-quarantine for 14 days? 
just now, I mean, just yeah. now you are being delivered to a hospital, but this might soon be impossible. Yeah. The, we need, definitely we need to change the policy. And uh, right now we are isolating the, those mild cases. The, so the isolation is the main the objective to put them in hospital. But uh, in probably coming days, it may become not possible. And uh, then we need to change the policy. And uh, so we cannot uh, isolate these mild cases. The healthcare facility hospitals the, the should concentrate the, on taking care of the severe cases not putting the mild cases in the, the bed. The, the hospital should focus on the, the taking care of uh, the, the severe cases. And, uh, but the, this is very, very tricky the, the, for the government. The, in this kind of uh, situation, we have to downgrade the, our measures, right? So, Right now, we are isolating all the cases, but the tomorrow we cannot isolate all cases. And the, the right now, the the even the mild cases should should go to the the certain designated hospital. But the the, the tomorrow we have to tell them to stay home. So this the downgrading is very very the the difficult one. And uh, so the risk communication is a key uh, for the people to understand. But the, 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 if the number increase, the, I'm sure the number will increase in coming week, uh, coming days, then uh, the, the government should the, the downgrade their, the, the measures, which is quite difficult to communicate. But we have to do it. Okay, we're running out of time. I think this will have to be the last one, Richard. <clears throat> Richard Lloyd Parry of The Times again. Um, there's all kinds of practical advice being given, some of it contradictory. So perhaps the easiest way to pose the question is to ask what you personally do mm -hmm. to protect yourself from the virus hour by hour. For example, how many times and under what circumstances do you wash your hands? That's the first question. The second one, which is a bit loftier, is this. Um, these cases of transmission of, of, of viruses from animals to humans seem to be happening every, every few years, you know, once a decade now. There's Ebola, a SARS, MERS, now this one. Um, there was the Spanish flu, of course, in the early 20th century. Um, is this, are these, these kind of events inevitable? Uh, and is it inevitable that at some point in the future there will be a virus that is highly infectious, difficult to detect, and very deadly? The, the first question, I wash hand after the toilet, <laughs> and, uh, but uh, I don't believe the washing hand is the very effective way to prevent this virus. And uh, I'm not wearing a mask right now. At, uh, I have a very severe the pollen allergy, and uh, I might wear the mask, uh, but the not, that's not because of uh, the fear of this virus, because of the allergy. And, uh, but uh, I will certainly the, the avoid the prolonged face-to-face the -face contact, especially the 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 with the person with the the acute respiratory like the illness and uh, this morning I was in uh, Yamanote line and uh, it was very congested and the person in front of me was coughing and uh, that is my worry and that that's I probably try to avoid as much as possible. 
And uh, the, for your next question, the, the, because of uh, the globalization, the, the risk of this kind of the, the emerging disease is increasing. And, uh, and also, the, the, as we have been seeing in this virus, the, the speed of spread is much, much faster. The, the, it's much faster than 2003. The, if we have the, the, the SARS in 2003, the, started, the outbreak started in Guangdong province. And the, ma the first major outbreak occurred in uh, Guangzhou of Guangdong province. And now we have a many direct flights from Japan to Gu Guangzhou. And I'm sure that if the same thing happened, the Japan will be the, one of the first countries to have this virus. So the, the, we are living in a different world now. And the risk of uh, emergence and the risk of spread uh, is certainly increased. And, uh, but uh, we, cannot, the, 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 we cannot go back to Edo period mm -hmm. anymore. So we have to the deal with this uh, kind of risk. And the uh, international community should work together. And uh, the, the, otherwise, uh, we cannot the, reduce the risk of this kind of disease. I believe that in the international community, there is now talk that you can't discuss animal health and human health separately. It has to be one health. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. And the environment. And the environment, yes. Uh, we'll have to end there. Um, I predict that the most quoted comment from this session will be the bit about the 19th century strategy. Uh, Dr. Stani, I'd like to thank you for coming, and we'll give you a one-year honorary membership in the club. We hope to see you again. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.